So, welcome to the Unfamous Fly. Today I'm going to be tying this little uh, red buzzer. Um, it's a pattern that I once seen on Trout Fisherman magazine. It must have been about 2011 and I tied a few of them up. And uh, it's been a great wee fly ever since, uh, especially in winter. A point fly on a team of three buzzers, fishing it deep relative to the other flies. You could fish it under a bung, I tend just to fish it straight. Um, the bead, in my case I'm using a, a 2 mil silver tungsten, but you could use a brass and you can use gold or silver, it's up to yourself. Um, hook wise, uh, you want to use something like a, a full and mil super grub, something like that, or a buzzer, a buzzer hook, whatever your favourite is. In this case, because uh, it just happens to be what I have lying about here just now, I'm using a fish on curved hook in a size 14 here for this. But uh, if you're fishing for rainbows, you probably want to f use something that's a wee bit heavier. So uh, thread-wise, it's um, UTC 70 denier in fire orange. And uh, we'll get on and tie this fly. So get tied in at the back of the bead. And because it's UTC, you can keep flattening the thread out by spinning your bobbin anti-clockwise and uh, that helps you get a nice thin profile uh, you can use uni if you want but um it's 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 uh, i think the utc is a wee bit better really uh, take it right down to the bend of the hook So you're going to use size 16 pearl mylar for the rub, so you need to get a wee bit of that and tie that in near the tail. Keep the 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 tag end the the waist fairly short. You don't want it to build up any bulk in the bulk in the body and um, tie that in and when you're happy with how far you've come bring your thread back up towards the bead and you're going to build up a nice carrot shape uh, in your fly keep remembering to flatten your thread out and uh, you'll be building up behind the bead a wee bit thicker than everywhere else that's where you're thorax end is going to be. Uh, so once you're happy with your your body shape bring the uh, thread back up. Remember to keep untwisting it. The act of you actually winding it on is actually tightening it so you have to keep undoing what the twist that you've just put in so uh, it's a bit of a fiddle anyway, bring your thread back up to the behind the bead and then you're going to bring the, the rib up and tie that off open turns you probably get five or six turns on, on the way up Once you brought it up to a couple of mils shy of the bead, you want to tie that off. And you can get rid of the excess. Now, the next bit is kind of optional, but I'm going to do it here. And how you do it is up to yourself. But in the original pattern, it had blue cheeks. So you need a wee bit of blue holographic tinsel. And you can either tie it in at the base of the thorax and uh, bring it up over the top of your already built up thorax or the way I'm doing it here because I think it makes for a neater job is I tie it in behind the bead and I'll pull it back the way that way it stops you having this built up bit of thread right behind the bead that seems to get in between the cheeks and the the, the bead and it sort of doesn't look right to me 
Um, but you can you can do either way, or you can leave them out all together and just have a, a red thorax. It's entirely up to you. I don't always bother with these, but I'm just doing it here because it was in the original. Um, I'm not sure how big a, an effect it actually has. Uh, if you don't want to use blue and you want to use some other colour, go ahead and do it. Now it's a wee bit of faff this because you're trying to keep the the bit tinsel that you're going to use in front of the bead, in front of the thread, uh, while you get it locked in, and then you can cut the um, the two wee tag ends off, and you'll lose them under the the thread of the thorax. So I'll just. Once you're happy that that's tied in nice and neat, just lose the two wee tag ends. One thing about this fly is it, it's it's not a terribly robust fly uh, in terms of once a fish gets hold of its teeth, uh, that pearl mylar and thread body is going to rip. So you're going to have to varnish or resin it at the end anyway. So it'll cover a multitude of sins if you've got any wee flaws. So don't you get too tight, uh, upset if you if it's not absolutely perfect shape or it's a wee, a wee bit stub of thread or anything. It's it's not the end of the world. So you build up your thorax to a, generally a, a a thickness that's around about the same as the diameter of the base of the bead. And doing it this way means that the, the, the tinsel cheeks will come straight from behind the bead and you'll not end up with any excess thread over the, you know, coming over the bead at the end. But you can do it that way if you want, it's up to you. It's just, it's just I think it looks a wee bit better this way. So pull your two cheeks back when you're ready and one or two locking turns. Make sure you're happy with the the angle that they're coming up and nip them off as short as you can. I'm really needing to get some new fly tying scissors. I, I don't think these ones are doing the job really now, so I'm getting left with longer tags than I would like. But um, again, well, I don't think the fish will really notice. And just a couple of turns just to make it neat. And then you want to get your whip finisher or do your uh, not by hand and just finish that off. Try not build up too much bulk in the process of doing it. And keep it nice and tight and nip off your excess thread. And then, as I say, it's not the most durable fly in the world, being the way it's constructed. So uh, you're going to need to get s something either like Sally Hansen's or varnish, or in my case, I'm using some UV fine resin. I use the Deer Creek stuff. I find that it sets the best, and give it a good coat, even coat all over until you're happy. If you want, once you've done your UV, you can um, give it a give it a, another coat or give it a coat of varnish if 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 you if you like to do it that way. I tend to leave mine on the windowsill the day after I've tied them and if it's been a sunny day it, uh, it hardens them up good. I think the, the sunlight hardens them off. So give it a wee all over and when you're happy Zap it with your laser. And basically, uh, that's it. Dead simple. Uh, have a few in your box. It's a great wee pattern to have for the winter. I've, I've found it's pulled me out of many um, blank situations. And uh, I've always got a few, I think it's great, so hope you enjoyed that, catch you later.